Hallelujah, child of God. Once again, welcome into the No More Curse broadcast. I am thrilled to have the wonderful honor of ministering the gospel to you all over wherever you may be living in the continent of Africa, the UK, and beyond from sea to shining sea in the North American continent and even in the Asian part of the world. This message is a message for every human on the planet. God is no respecter of persons. And when we go preach this gospel and do all the earth and those hear it, believe it, then these signs follow them that believe. What I really want you to know is the love of God is the purpose behind all manifestation of his power to deliver you. The reason God sets us free is not to be better servants or because we've qualified for it by our natural works. It's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. God's motive to set you and I free, to turn the curse into a blessing, is because He loved us. So many times in Jesus' ministry, He was moved with compassion and taught them, moved with compassion and fed them, and in particular, moved with compassion to heal and to deliver their lives. You know, faith is really the implement by which the power of God comes toward us who believe. And what the real tragedy is, is most people do not know, in 1 John chapter 4, verses 16 through 18, it tells us we have known and believed the love God has for us. That when that love reaches a maturity, it casts out all fear. And we love Him because He first loved us. We're not really talking about our love coming to maturity, the ability that we have within ourselves to love. We're really talking about a deep revelation of His love for us. You know, it's a revelation of His love for me that changed me more than anything else. This, by this, Jesus said, all men will know that you are my disciples, that you have love one for another. It is the distinguishing mark and the characteristic of the DNA of the character of any person that's truly born again and brought from the power of darkness to the power of light, the power of Satan to the power of God. And it is the motive behind everything we do as believers. And what separates Christianity from every other religion of works in the world and achieving a higher consciousness, we need to know we couldn't get to God and we're unworthy to do so, but He left heaven because God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believeth in Him would not perish. Come on into the broadcast today in the school of Him in this session. Let your faith rise in the love of God because love not only never fails, it will destroy all fear and it will give you absolute confidence that God is going to move that mountain and work a miracle of deliverance in your life today. Well, enjoy the broadcast and I'll be back at the end to pray for you. Get your faith ready and your notebook ready. The best is yet to come. Now go with me to Romans 5. It says this. I'm going to read it all the way down in the classic from verse 7. Now it's an extraordinary thing for one to give his life even for an upright man. Though perhaps for a noble and lovable and generous benefactor, somebody might dare to die. But God shows and clearly proves his own love for us by the fact that while we were still sinners, Christ the Messiah the anointed one died for us. Therefore, since we are now justified, acquitted, and made righteous, and brought into right relationship with God by Christ's blood, how much more certain is it that we should be saved by Him from the indignation and the wrath of God? For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son, it is much more certain now that we are reconciled, that we shall be saved. That is, daily delivered from sin's dominion through His resurrection life. Oh, yeah. Woo-hoo! Hallelujah. Verse 11, and not only so, but we also rejoice and exultingly glory in God in His love and perfection. We exultantly glory in God in His love and perfection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received and enjoy our atonement and reconciliation. Oh, my. Oh, my, my, my. Now, here's what I want you to see. The reason the royal law of love is called the royal law is because it is both legal and vital. It is both sides of God. 
It is God's manifestation side and God's character side. That's what I want to talk about, at least make sure we get in in this session. Here we see from John 14, what we just read, and from Romans 5, that love manifested itself. Now, we'll talk about that manifestation probably in another session, the degree to which it manifested itself, the power. The, and this is where, once we get this revelation, we'll get a revelation of the exceeding greatness of his power that comes toward us when we believe because the same love is driving it. I mean, he wants you healed more than you want to be healed. See, now, I, I've, got, I've got something to say. But, I mean, once you get a light, once you see this, it'll change the way you respond to God. I, I'm sensing, before I go into the manifestation side and the character side and break that out, because we've already gotten to the manifestation side out of Romans 5 and John 14, and I want you to see that, but I've got another little thing I want to do to, to break that out, almost like a pyramid. If you've got love here, which is God, and you've got the manifestation, what God does, and who God is. So you got what God does, that's manifestation, who God is, that's his character, yeah. right? And since he can't change, neither will his manifestations because his manifestations come from who he is. Amen. So if he is love, then everything he manifests is because of love. Amen. It can't come from another motivation. Right. Therefore, since he can't change in his love for me, I'm guaranteed every time that he releases a promise that he always wants me to have it. And that he will manifest himself to produce it. Yeah, Even when I come short of it, if I'll just believe in his mercy. Amen. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Yeah. It'll bring my faith, it'll make my faith soar like an eagle. When we were yet without strength. When we were yet without strength, it says, Christ died for the ungodly. Now, I, I want to show you something that what love will do. Um, and We'll get over there and just say, well, why don't we just go there now? Let's go there on the manifestation side. Let's just talk about that. All right, let, let's just go to these two parts. So we got love, which is God himself, right? Which now we know is the Holy Spirit. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by who? All right, so this love, this love then, the Holy Spirit, every single thing the Holy Spirit does. Is because of this royal law. Amen. He's the Holy Spirit. He's the Spirit of truth. It's impossible for the Holy Spirit to operate out from under the canopy of this law. He can't do it. Now, we've, we, we have already discussed in this understanding of spiritual laws this idea that love is the great discerner. You remember when we did that? You remember two weeks ago, we went to Philippians 1 and other places and proved that, that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will only operate out of the love command. Right. Amen. Amen. So now we see then all of his manifestations. Well, what would his manifestations be? Spirituals, spiritual gifts, prophecy, tongues. Interpretation of tongues, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits, gifts of healings, working of miracles, gift of faith. All his manifestations now are motivated by this love because their equipment coming to strengthen, anoint, empower, authorize, help human flesh do what it can't do in its own strength when we are without strength. He strengthens us with might by his spirit in our inner man so that against everything, Christ dwells in our heart by faith and we're rooted and grounded in love and now we're able to apprehend, comprehend with all the saints the full height of it, the full depth of it, the breadth of it, the length of it. The... We get it all. Because he love will strengthen our spirit to be able to, to, to get it. Amen. Things we can't do in our own strength. Amen. Now, if we're talking about that, then we're talking about love, who is the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit has 
an action side, a manifestation side, a doing side, a power side, an anointing side. He also has a personhood, which is a personality side, huh? a character side, right? So these are the things that make him up so that we can know who he is and he does what he does because of who he is. And once you get an intimate relationship with him and know who he is and what he does because of who he is, suddenly it's pretty easy to discern what spirit's in operation. Because if love's not behind it, the Holy Ghost didn't offer it. Which is why really loving God and loving people will drive a person to believe God to get anointed, to be used in spiritual gifts so they can help people. Love will motivate a person to want to prophesy. It'll ask him to excel, to edify the church through tongues and interpretation because I want to build up the body because he loves the church. He died for the church. He wants the church strong and he wants me to do my part and I'm part of the church and I'm washed in the blood and I have this great hope that somewhere in that glory he's going to use me to do part of it. Glory to God. Oh, Amen. And with that, there's a manifestation side in me Amen. that should manifest through me. And the preacher shouldn't do all the praying for the sick. And the preacher shouldn't do all the prophesying. And the preacher shouldn't do all the praying in tongues at the prayer meeting. And now do you see what's going on? You see what's happening here? It's strengthening the inner man of a person, driving them to press in beyond their fears, out of their comfort zone, wanting to be used because they're driven by a force that takes them outside their self. The love of God removes the fear, self-consciousness because something's more important than my reputation. And what is it? Your freedom. God wants you free. I'm in love with him. I want what he wants. I can't set you free in my own strength. So love demands I operate in an anointing that will heal. Love will make me fast and pray until that anointing manifests itself. Lo lo love will make me fast and pray until I get wisdom on how to operate in it. Love, love will cause me to pay good money to come to Bible school to see how it works. Amen. Seriously, don't you? That, isn't, that what you're, isn't that why you're here? Something drove you to do this? Yes, sir. Is either the school of him or we conjured it up? So I can't believe you're in here just because some polite person asked you? No, sir. Because huh? you passed a lot of people that were wanting money and you didn't give it to them. Evidently, it's worth something. It's of value to you because love pushed you this direction. Yes, sir. Woo! Glory to God. Do you see what's going on here? Oh, glory to God. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. All right, so let's go there and let's finish this session talking about this two-pronged effect. We're going to talk about he, 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 he does what he does is because of who he is. He manifests, right, because of his character. And Jesus has already said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments, and my Father will love you, and we will manifest ourselves. Can you see love is the driving force of all manifestation? All right, so let's go back then to uh, 1 Corinthians. It says, love suffers long. Verse 4 now, is kind. Love envies not. Love vaunts not itself, is not puffed up, does not behave itself unseemly, seeks not its own, is not easily provoked, thinks no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never fails. Now, I'm going to talk about the motivation factor, and I'm going to come back to a couple things. But now drop all the way down to verse 13. And now, abideth faith, hope, and love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Chapter 14, verse 1. Read it on. See, it's a letter. He's not finished with the subject at the chapter break. He's not finished. Follow after love. He's still talking about it. 
And what are the next four words? If a person follows after love, it's going to drive them to desire manifestations. Love wants to manifest. Love wants action. Love wants works. Love wants to do something. It can't just stand idly by and watch what it loves perish without lifting a finger. It's got to get involved. It's got to intervene. It's got to say something. It's got to make a difference. It's got to give something. It can't just sit there idle. That's why love and corresponding action are the same. It's the motivation for all manifestation. It's corresponding action. It's faith works. Now you can see how that faith is dead and it works by love. It's put to work by love because love is the corresponding action of faith. Do you get it? Love is. So when I'm acting correspondingly, I'm walking in love. When I believe something so strongly that I'll act on it, I'm now walking in love. I know God loves me so much he promised it to me. And love, my revelation of how much he loves me that he promised it to me, caused me to believe he'll do that thing for me. And it caused me to believe it so strongly I'll act on it because I just believe God's love is greater than anything that can keep me from it. I'm so sure he loves me. I'm so sure he can't lie. I'm so sure he wants me to have it. Because love is what motivated him to even speak those words to me. He doesn't say something to me and I have to figure out how to do it. Because he loved me. He spoke that from love. He spoke that already predisposed to give me everything I would ever need out of heaven and earth to get it done. And he's sure not going to leave me down here alone without strength. If he died for me when I wasn't his child. And now I am his child, part of the family with a family name, and he told me to do something. You think he's going to abandon me now? No, sir. No way. He loves me. And he gave himself for me. And he's still giving himself for me. In intercession at the right hand of the Father? Oh, my. This is what causes us to go to the crusade field and tell people that the tomb is empty, that Jesus is alive, and that if he's alive, and he is alive, and if he is alive, he can do the same things today he did in Bible days. And therefore, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and that they're not obligated to believe anything I say unless miracles happen on that field tonight. See, everybody else has got a leather-bound book with gold-leaf edges and, and a list of rules I'm not asking them to believe. I'm not appealing to their understanding. I am saying God so loved the world that he gave. I am saying based upon all these scriptures that healing was promised even in the Old Testament. So Jesus didn't heal anybody in his earthly ministry that was yet born again. You have to be born again to get healed. God loves you. That's why he heals you. And I let them know God loves you. Even if you're not serving him, he'll heal you tonight. And when he proves that to you, will you come to him and make him your Lord? Because if he can heal your body, surely he can forgive your sins. And I have never failed once preaching that message that miracles didn't happen all over the crusade field. And when tumors disappear and blind eyes see and deaf ears hear and the cripples walk, it's easy to have an altar call. Because what's easier to say, son, your sins be forgiven thee, or to rise, take up your bed and walk? So that you may know the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. I say to the sick of the palsy, rise, take up your bed and walk. And he took up his bed and he walked. And the power on earth to forgive sins is the same as the power on earth to heal because both are backed by the same motive to manifest them. He forgave you because he loved you. He'll heal you because he loves you. He'll deliver you because he loves you. Not because you deserve it. Not because you've demonstrated strength for it. He died for you and me when we were without strength. But he commanded his love toward us. Manifested his power to deliver us. When we could not have any ability to lift up ourselves. He jumped down there and got us. Because God so loved the world. Yes. By this shall all men know. Yes. 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 Woo, that's our message. Yes. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory. How much must he love us? Woo! 
You know what's amazing to me about this? This just absolutely, like some of the things we did with faith and other things, we've just literally blown up some false doctrines throughout these quarters of teaching. And once again, we're absolutely just blowing it to bits, this false doctrine of sovereignty. Huh? Huh? Because the scripture says we're saved from wrath because he loved us. And that he's completely all love, so he can't be up there wanting to judge us because mercy triumphs over judgment and faith works by love. So therefore, faith is an act of a free will toward God. Yeah. My judgment's on my own head. God didn't create anybody on purpose to send them to hell. He loved the whole world. Yes. Yes. Amen. Glory. Glory to God. So let's flip that around. Let's say that, and God is sovereign. There is a biblical doctrine of sovereignty. But what's amazing is he's sovereign in the nature of his love. I mean, that's never going to change. He cannot change. He is love and all love and predisposed to show it to anybody that comes and all that come to me. I'll in no wise cast them out. Amen. That's sovereign. That means I come to him. Hey, when you're born again, when I'm born again, you're born again, the devil's no longer your master. Stop talking to him about your sin. Don't have any longer any conversation. You just let him know in no uncertain terms. We're not on speaking terms. You have no right. I'm not even in your sphere of existence. I was translated from under your authority. If I missed it, my Lord will take that up with me. You have no say about this thing. I do not receive your lives that are trying to bring shame and condemnation on me. The love of God is shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Ghost. Once you get a revelation of love, instead of running from the Father when you sin, you'll run to him. (laughs) He'll fix it the next time just like he did the first time. Oh, glory be to God. Wow, I'm out of time. Golly, i got to stop. Hallelujah, friend. No matter who you are or where you've watched this broadcast today, I pray that the same mighty power of the river of life, the very love of God himself and manifestation has ripped through the television screen and into your, your sphere of existence like it did that classroom. I want you to know God so loved the world that he gave. That means every gift of God, every gift of God's grace is a love gift. Love is the motivating factor in three worlds. It's the royal law as to why God does anything that he does for you. Not because we earn it, not because we deserve it, but because he loves us. That's why faith works by love. We can believe he'll do it for us because he's not doing it based upon our merit. He's doing it because he loves us. And most people don't have a revelation of faith in God problem. They have a revelation of the love of God problem. Did you know that healing is a mercy of God? It's one of the manifestations of his compassion. He wants to bless you today, and I want to pray for you right now. But before I do, let me just let you know, you need to connect with us on experiencehim.org. You need to sign up on nomorecurse.tv, watch daily broadcasts, all the different ways you can watch it. I've watched him in, in six continents, and hundreds of thousands of people have been touched by the power of the healing, delivering ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and the same. He's the same for you today. As you're healed and delivered today, be sure and connect with us. Give us your testimony. We want to reach out to you. The best is yet to come. Now put your hand on your body where you may be hurting, on your wallet, maybe on a picture of a family member, and release your faith because Jesus and his name are the same, and he loves you just the same today as he always did. So by the authority of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every viewer, every partner, Every person where this message has gone electronically or in any other way in the classroom or in the school of him. Satan, we break your power now. Spirit of fear, loose the people. Come off of their minds. Come out of their lives. Father, I bless their families. I bless their finances. I bless their businesses. Be healed now from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Be loved. Be blessed. Be free be delivered, and in Jesus' name, rise and behold. We love you. See you soon. Are you ready to step into your destiny? Your life will be forever transformed as you grow in your relationship with God. 
become established in strong faith grounded upon God's Word, and become empowered to impact your world. If you're ready to answer the assignment of the Holy Spirit and become a world changer, come train with us. Often the first step on a new journey is the hardest, but we are here to help every step of the way. Apply today, either through the online application or by mail. Our core curriculum will begin with classes on righteousness, authority of the believer, and faith. Our instructors will impart biblical revelation knowledge and application, as well as practical ministry experience. Experience School of Him for yourself. You will never be the same. Wow, what a wonderful message. Thank you for watching and tuning in. We here at Harvest International Ministries know that your time is valuable. So we wanna make connecting with us as easy as it can get. For example, we know you caught this broadcast, but there might be a TV show you miss. So head over to tracyharris.tv. You can watch this show again or any others we produce 24 seven on demand to build your faith and change your world. Also, head over to experiencehim.org. We have blog posts. You can check out our monthly partner letter, our seasonal magazine, or you can even download free copies of any of Brother Tracy's books. But we don't want to be the only ones doing the talking. We want to hear your prayer requests. We want to hear your praise reports. So email us at the website or message us on Facebook and Instagram to let us know what's going on in your life. Finally, we know we have a worldwide footprint and we're so thankful Jesus gave it to us. But we know that means not everybody can worship with us physically. So make sure to join us Sunday mornings on Facebook Live, YouTube, Roku, and TracyHarris.tv. We are so glad you stayed. We pray you enjoyed the message, and we pray that Jesus brings His grace, His wonderful, wonderful peace in your life, and that He touches you with all He is into all you are. Give him your life today and let him do something with it. And go out and change your world. Have peace in Jesus' name. Thank you for watching Experience Him. If this message has ministered to you and you would like more information or to contact Harvest International Ministries, write to us at the address on the screen. Or please visit us online at tracyharris.tv. Join us as we go from vision to victory by helping this generation reach its destiny through teaching, preaching, and healing the nations.